Nations, beauty supply, beauty power and style, power and style. Tanisha's beauty supply, beauty power and style, power and style. Get yeah, whatever yeah. you need. Joining us, Patrick. This is Patrick, and I will give you his last name toward the end of the video because he is one of the biggest distributors where you can order some of your beauty supply products, all types of wigs, all different kinds of brands, and he is black owned. So we're going to interview Patrick, get to know him a little bit, because what we do know is that the beauty supply industry is booming, it's growing. And African Americans are taking a much larger part of this industry. So it is so exciting to know that we have a black man who is able to be one of your vendors for your beauty supply store. How are you, Patrick? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you for having me. Great, great. So tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you want the beauty supply store owners to know about you? Well, I mean, uh, I started off, this is a family business. Um, so originally, you know, my dad started it and, you know, he worked for a beauty supply store. And after working for so many years, he was like, oh, you know, if this guy could do it, why can't I? Wow. And that's pretty much what, um, you know, set in motion him to open his first store. And mind you, this was in New York and he moved down to Miami, Florida, where he opened his first store, which is still busy today. Uh, you know, 1,200 square foot store, humble, humble beginnings. And um, that's pretty much where I had my first job as a kid, you know, sweeping the floors, um, doing inventory, stocking stuff. As I grew up, went to school, I came back to the business and I did retail for a little bit, but I really found my passion for wholesaling, which is, you know, dealing in bulk, large quantities. I kind of didn't have the patience for retail, <laughs> you know, selling one piece at a time. <laughs> So, you know, and I, and I, and I saw it as a challenge to see how much volume can I really push. And, you know, originally we started off in the islands and then we worked our way into the U.S. The U.S. we saw was a very thriving market and a market that was in demand because the consensus that I get with all the beauty supply stores that I, beauty supply owners that I speak to is my rep doesn't get back to me. They always say they're out of stock. I can't get an account. It was, uh, it was mind blowing because, you know, we are the largest consumers of these products yet, you know, we don't really have a voice when it comes to ownership. So I really wanted to level out the playing field mm -hmm. uh, such that everyone can be competitive and, you know, everyone wants to create that legacy business, especially with all the beauty supply stores that I help start up. It's not, I don't want them to think of it as a mom and pop store. I want them to think of it as a, a real business that, you know, they can pass down create that generational wealth. We've been very successful, especially with opening multiple stores, you know, helping them get stocked, especially with items that are in high demand, accounts that are very hard to get because of the high minimums. So it's been very a very rewarding experience, to say the least. Um, that's pretty much a little bit about me. You know, I'm in multiple social medias. I'm in Clubhouse. So, you know, a lot of people are there uh, seeking out information. So it's a very cool platform that I jump on sometimes time to, you know, provide advice and insight. Great. You have given us so much. Thank you. You're making my job a whole lot easier. <laughs> so thank you for that. You mentioned that you started off in the islands and I know people are going to want to know where you're from because they can hear the accent. So where were you born? Yeah. So originally my parents are from Haiti. Um, so I'm Haitian. Mm -hmm. um, everyone says I have an accent, but I really don't hear it. But um, I'm <laughs> sure. Um, <laughs> so you were born in Haiti? No, no, I was born here. I'm Haitian, I guess. So I, okay. speak, I speak Creole. Um, I speak broken French, broken Spanish, and, you know, broken English. So oh. that's it. <laughs> okay. So Haitian, what, which, which part of Haiti? My dad's from the capital and my mom is from a uh, smaller side of okay. Haiti. And you, you mentioned that you all had opened multiple stores. Do you guys own multiple stores? No, right now we just have one retail store, which is what my dad started, uh, mm -hmm. like, over 20 years ago on 20th Street. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a 1,200 square foot store uh, that does retail and it pretty much services a small little corner in Alapata, uh, Florida. And mm -hmm. then where I'm at right now, um, this is our new warehouse facility. It's 10,000 square feet. Oh, wow. Um, we're literally, yeah, so we're literally right across the street from Miami International Airport. So this was pretty much a strategic lo location that we picked. I, I tell everyone that when I moved here, you know, this should be like, you always want to put yourself in a position where 
you're comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. Originally, mm -hmm. we went from a 3,000 square foot warehouse to this. And, you know, that transition was extremely scary, to say the least. And, you wow. know, with Corona and everything. Yeah, with Corona and everything happening, you know, it, it was, that was, when we moved, that was when it was at its peak. It was, it was <laughs> crazy. You know, February last year, looking back, you know, we've, we've made some strides to say the least. So how long have you been spearheading the business? I know you said it started with your father. So what year did you start taking in the reins? I was always involved really, but I really took full control of the wholesale aspect. I would say six years ago. That's, um, you know, really where I took a lead and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to go all the way. Oh, and did, did things change? Did the sales oh. increase? Oh, for sure. Most, most definitely. <laughs> oh, wonderful. That's every parent's dream is for their kids to be able to take the business to the next level. What advice would you give our beauty supply store owners in regards of being able to build a store or build a business that the next generation can take on? I would say to build a store, you really have to have a powerful launch, a powerful grand opening. And that takes you know a large amount of capital. So I highly recommend that if you're not ready to really, you know, put that capital forward, you're really going to start off kind of backwards. Um, we do assist new beauty supply stores owners with, you know, more or less whatever budget that they're comfortable with. But I tell everyone, when you open your store, you want to have that Walmart effect. As soon as you walk in to Walmart, you think you're going to buy, you know, some, some cookies and some juice, but you end up leaving spending $200. With a beauty supply store, you want the same effect. Someone goes in, they buy eyelashes, but as they're walking through the aisles, they pick up some Gorilla Glue. They pick up some, um, I mean, not Gorilla Glue. <laughs> 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 they, pick up, they pick up some got-to-be got to spray. They pick up some wigs, some crochet hair. And, you know, before you know it, they have the same effect. You know, they, they end up spending $50 when they only want to spend $3. You really want to open a store fully stocked so that you maximize every person that's walking in so when they walk in, they're not asking, oh, do you have such and such product or do you have this? They're asking how much, how mm -hmm. much is this? How much is that? So that's really what you want to hear. And that's really the goal. And then next thing I would say, it's uh, focus on systems and automation. The one thing that I feel is a detriment when you open a beauty supply store is you know, people go in with the mindset that they're going to open the store and they're going to be there 24 seven. Yes. And yeah, and that will burn you out so fast. Absolutely. It's, so fast so you know when you start your store from day one you want you always want to have that in mind how can you process this how can you give this job to someone else and so you, it's a less of a, less of a burden on you and you can focus more so on you know growing your business there's a quote that i read where it said the difference between an entrepreneur and, and self-employed if you're able to take three months off from your business and your business is still running you're an entrepreneur yes. if you can't do that you're self-employed <laughs> so the goal of that yeah, so the goal that everyone wants to do is entrepreneur being able to walk away from your business, come back, and it's still running functionally. From day one, you know, having a POS system, you know, having inventory management, you know, having proper staff, good training, things of that nature. So that's really what's going to set you up for that longevity, you know, the generational wealth and um, legacy. I totally agree with that. And that's what I definitely share with my, my subscribers for YouTube. We talk about that all the time. How do you set your store up where the store runs itself because like you right. said, I mean, if you don't, as soon as you stop, the store stops. So that's yeah, not really a business. Bad. Yeah. For African Americans, it has been very difficult to break into this market for a lot of reasons and money and capital is one. You said that we should think like Walmart. Well, if we don't have a lot of capital, what do you suggest when we start? Um, I would recommend not to rush into it, like trying to open a store with like, you know, $3,000 or $5,000, albeit it is possible. I mean, we've done it before, but again, you want to, you really have a firm grasp, especially in your community with a big opening. And then for people that say, oh, you know, I don't have the money, but I really want to do this. Um, the next alternative would be credit card hacking, which even we do. If your credit is good, you know, you get a business credit card with XYZ amount of, you know, spending limit, but you always have to get a credit card with rewards. So you load that card up with rewards. And a lot of times when you get a credit card for the first time, they give you bonus incentives. So if you spend XYZ dollars within three months, they give you, you know, 50,000 or 100,000 points. At the end of the day, you know, when you're buying all your inventory, you're buying your equipment, your furniture, et cetera. 
you could accumulate points and pretty much it's paying for itself. So in our case, you know, for example, you know, our, our cable, our utilities and our cable, it's all paid by our credit card because of the points we accumulate each month, which we redeem um, every cycle. I would highly recommend that to people that don't want to be cash flow negative once they do their grand opening. Just put everything on the credit card. You have the 30 days to pay it off. Worst case scenario, you can't pay it off. You know, you do the minimum payments. So that's another uh, trick that I found works extremely well, especially for us. I had not thought of that. I had been listening to some YouTube videos that, that were explaining that process, but you just really brought a lot of light to it. That's definitely something I'm going to have to check out. What would you say would be the most challenging thing about being a wholesale distributor? Uh, the most challenging is having everything that everyone wants you know we specialize mainly in hair go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you would like more information on vendors and operating your black owned beauty supply our top brands are sensational Outre, bobby boss janet but you know everyone is obsessed with free trust you know <laughs> so everyone wants the free trust crochet everyone wants you know the havana twist um but you know getting an account with these companies even for us has been extremely difficult we try to mitigate that by having something that's of similar quality mm -hmm. so that you can still make money, still make profit, and still bring customers in the door. But I, I would say that's probably the biggest, trying to get, you know, all the account that everyone wants. But, you know, I could safely say, you know, especially with certain companies, we're top three, top three accounts. A little bit of insight, like, you know, to survive and to prosper in this industry, it's not impossible, especially when you're Black. That's <laughs> encouraging. And where do you see... The beauty supply industry headed when it comes to African American, and I should stop saying African Americans because everybody is not African American. So, <laughs> some people are Haitian American. <laughs> but where do you see the beauty supply industry when it comes to ownership with blacks? Oh, it's definitely growing and it's definitely on the rise. A lot of people don't even know you exist. So this is why we're doing this video so that they can know they have somewhere to go where they don't have to feel locked out and they don't have to have $30,000 to start. Would you mind giving us a little tour of your warehouse? Sure. I was sitting on the back of the camera. Oh, this is, this is fantastic. Turn the camera. Uh... Uh, we can see from behind you. Oh. Yeah, we can see. Yeah, that is huge. That so is, this is really huge. So, this is, so when I tell you braiding hair cells, all of that is uh braiding hair those are palettes that came in today braiding hair we have uh let me see. yeah giant palettes that is a full palette of you know 1b uh you know shipping boxes orders and then this is the other side and if you could talk a little bit about your brands that you specialize, I know Altre is a really hot brand. Some of the wigs you have, I know you have the butter lace wigs that a lot of people ask about. You have Sensational, which is hard to get. I've ordered Rua from you. I've ordered the African braid hair. Um, what are some of the other hot brands that you have that people can order? Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you would like more information on vendors and operating your black owned beauty supply. And I know it's, um, it's a $500 minimum, correct? Correct. Okay. Um, so Sensational is our biggest line. Um, next up would be uh, Outre and then we carry Bobby Boss. We started expanding on Janet just because of the butterfly locks and um, Zuri is another one because of the headband wigs which have been flying um, you have the headband wigs? Yes, I have Do that. you know I have been looking for the <laughs> headband wigs? I got to put my, well, I'll be putting the order in next Friday. I promise you that. <laughs> yeah, so, so everything that's like been going, that's been trending, you know, we try to get it. Sensational, Outre, um, Bobby Boss, Janet, Zuri. I think we have Eben, It's a Wig. When you say and... Eben, you mean the edge control? Yeah. Okay. I've gotten human wigs from you as well. I'm going to show the audience. I have on, this wig is my tresses and it is my ultra. And hopefully they can see my wig that I have on. I've gotten human wigs as long as 28 inches from you. And I've been able to sell those wigs for like $300, $250, something like that. 
you're basically almost a one-stop shop. And we have had so many Blacks that are just wondering, where do I go to get the wholesale? Where do I go to get the wholesale? So I'm pointing you to this one man here. Well, you have given us a lot of information. You've told us the brands you carry. And the name of the company is For You Hair. And this is Patrick Noel. I wanted to save that to the end because some people, they just want to grab the vendors and leave. So I wanted them <laughs> to hear your whole story. You only need $500 to start your order, which is very, very small compared to what some of the other distributors require. Patrick has been supplying some of my brands for a while. And also, if you are concerned about safety and you don't want to be scammed, this is the guy for you. There are some people out there, believe it or not. I just did a video on someone who had scammed me out of $1,100. So this is just some information for the viewers to know. You can go to Patrick and, and he's trustworthy. He's going to send your product. One time you didn't have, I think, the specific wig that I ordered, maybe a couple of them. And you all called and your people just yeah. let me know you didn't have it and you just <laughs> took it off. You took it off the bill. You know, very trustworthy. Um, I really appreciate you, Patrick, and I'm excited about where we're going in the field. And thank you so much for your time. And then your website. It's uh, For You Hair. For You Hair. So this. Yeah, the number four, the letter U, hair.com. Okay. U -U -T -I -R .com. Say it one more time. Uh, the number four, the letter U, hair, H A I R.com. Well, thank you so much, Patrick. <laughs> Tanisha's beauty supply, beauty power and style, power and style. Tanisha's beauty supply, beauty power and style, power and style. Get whatever you need.